Welcome back to the Fremontian. It's Friday, finally. Final exams and grades are due next week. I hope I pass all my classes. Teachers, please be nice. Let's get started with the show. Science has so many fun and amazing facts. To find out our science teacher's best fun facts, we sent the polls and fun facts team around campus. Let's check it out. Welcome to Fremontian number seven. There are so many scientific phenomenons and interesting facts in the science world that often go unexplained. Luckily here at Fremont, we have an excellent science department with an array of teachers that concentrate on different subjects. We talked to several teachers and asked for their favorite science fact. What is your favorite scientific fun fact? Uh, any water that you drink at any given time has passed through a dinosaur. Fun fact, uh, usually uh, in CSI or any forensic science investigation, people usually go to maybe a strain of hair or saliva for proof of DNA, uh, but actually every cell type has your DNA. Fun fact. Thank you. Okay, one of my favorite scientific fun facts is about the genetics unit with students. One of the things that they learn about is about how they get half of their genetic material from their biological mother and half of their genetic material from their biological father. And along with that, one of the things that they also learn is that some of the genetic material that they have in their mitochondria in their cells is actually from their mother's line. Uh, I'll give you a chemistry fun fact. Uh, one of, I have two. The first one is that uh, helium and hydrogen make up 98% of all matter that exists. And the second is that there are two uh, elements that exist as a liquid on the periodic table. Those two elements include are uh, mercury and bromine. A big thank you to our teachers for giving us their time. It was exciting to hear from them and learn new things along the way. I'm a member of the Magnet family, and I'm proud to say that we have a computer science, engineering, and robotics team. They've been successful in recent competitions. Let's see what they're all about. Roll the tape. What is going? What is going? What is going? Everyone? Today we're going to be interviewing Miss Prez and Mr. Gonzalez to let you know what's going on in the, in the robotics club. Let's go check it out. All right. So my name is Miss Perez. I'm in room 261. I teach AP Calculus, uh, Principles of Engineering, and Aerospace Engineering. The purpose of robotics is to be able to give students a chance to apply the skills that they've learned from Principles of Engineering. Um, and some concepts of aerospace as well. Uh, we use VEX Robotics uh, for principles of engineering, and uh, we also use some portions of VEX Robotics for aerospace. Uh, recently, we've been using Rev Robotics for competition purposes uh, with the Will I Am Foundation. But um, the purpose is to have friendly competitions within schools, within um, local areas. The traits that I want students to leave with is um, building up leadership skills, teamwork abilities, um, how to problem solve if something doesn't work the way they want it to work, how do they overcome that? Um, what type of adjustments can they do uh, with the items that they're given? So the benefits of robotics is um, not only does uh, it help you, like for example, if you have students that want to go into an engineering field, it gives them the hands-on, um, approach to be able to learn how to do robotics at an early phase so that when they do go to college you know they have some ability and understanding of how robotics works. So it all depends on the Will I Am Foundation and LAUSD if they would like to have us compete again with Rev Robotics um, but you know if that's something that's being offered with the school I don't mind assisting. What I want to do uh, different for next year instead of um, competing with Rev Robotics I would actually like to see if the school will give us some um, funding for us to be able to compete with VEX Robotics and go nationwide. March is Women's History Month and Tuesday March 8th was Women's International Day. Our Magnet leadership planned a special event for our female teachers on campus. Mr. Producer hit it. History Month is about commemorating and celebrating the vital role of women in American history. Magnet Leadership is giving flowers to Magnet teachers that are women to recognize them during Women's History Month for their hard work here at Fremont. We celebrate Women's History Month to remind ourselves of the accomplishment of women throughout history. 
Women's History Month had its origins as a national celebration in 1981 when Congress passed Public Law 9798, which authorized and requested the president to proclaim the week beginning March 7, 1982 as Women's History Week. Throughout the next five years, Congress continued to pass joint resolutions designating a week in March as Women's History Week. In 1987, after being petitioned by the National Women's History Project, Congress passed Public Law 109, which designated the month of March 1987 as Women's History Month. Between 1988 and 1994, Congress passed additional resolutions requesting and authorizing the President to proclaim March of each year as Women's History Month. All right, this sounds weird to say, but juniors, 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 are you ready for your mock interviews? They're just around the corner. Are you nervous? Well, don't be. We the seniors believe you'll do great. For more on this, we sent our senior team to talk to Mr. Poe. Check it out. Hey guys, we just got back uh, interviewing Mr. Poe and how he prepares the juniors to be prepared for the mock interview. Come check it out. I'm the Link Learning Coordinator at the school. I've been at Fremont for 12 years. Thank you, Mr. Poe. And we've been wondering, what is the mock interview? So the Common Core Standards ask, um, ask, school, ask students to graduate college prepared and career ready. So the mock interviews are a career readiness activity where students learn how to write a resume, write a cover letter, answer interview questions, learn professionalism. And in the process of that, um, they learn kind of what it takes to, to find a job and to, to get a career. And it also opens up the door for them to have an internship in the summer following. How do mock interviews prepare the juniors? So kind of like what I uh, just mentioned, um, it prepares them for the professional mm -hmm. environment. Uh, so understanding what, what, what is required to get a job, how to act in the workplace. They meet with a person that's from the, from the workforce and that person guides them a little bit too, gives them feedback. And then hopefully they take advantage of the internship where they actually are working while still in high school. Since this is preparation for the mock interviews, where will the actual mock interview take place? So previously we had these giant cohorts of like a hundred kids that would come in here and then we'd take them up a little bit at a time. This time we split it up a little bit. We're gonna do um, three sessions over two days and each session is like a smaller 20 to 30 group. And we're gonna take them into the library upstairs. They'll sit along the wall. And as they're called over um, to the table, they'll sit at their computer and virtually meet with a professional. Is it just juniors who are participating in the mock interview? It is just juniors. It is, uh, this is an 11th grade program. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Pope, for your appreciation and for helping us out with the mock interview. Awesome. <laughs> helping us out with the mock interview. Definitely, it's my pleasure. Thank you guys. All right, you already know what time it is. It's time for everyone's favorite segment. It's time for sports, sports, sports. Sports, sports, sports! Just roll the tape. All right, welcome back to Fremont Team Sports. This week we have a special interview with Coach Edwards for the boys volleyball team. Let's just dive right into it. Hey everybody, um, I'm Coach Edwards. I'm the coach of the boys volleyball team. I'm also a physics teacher here at John C. Fremont. Um, a typical practice for our team these days is looking like uh, kind of we start off with a warm up, making sure everybody is ready to go. And then we get into some basics, kind of passing lines where players will practice passing the ball, um, hitting lines, serving, stuff of that nature. And then we'll get into some drills and we'll, we'll usually finish up with like a few scrimmages at the end of practice, kind of like higher energy, a little more light, but light and fun kind of. Uh, our team goals, uh, I think they're kind of haven't been fully decided quite yet. Um, so we'll see how it goes um, early on in the season where we haven't seen what the other teams look like so far in our league. Um, I'm feeling pretty optimistic. I think we're going to be a pretty strong contender and I'm hoping that we can take the first place. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, um, so this year it is a little bit too late because the season has already begun. So our teams are figured out. Um, but next year, um, there's going to be a bunch of open spots open. And if you guys, or if anyone's interested, um, they're happy to drop by my classroom, 302. 
um, and ask me about that and I can try to get them some information about what next year is going to look like. Uh, some things that I, that I look for in players. Number one is just having um, a positive attitude. Um, I want everybody on the team to get along with each other. Volleyball is a very emotional sport um, and it's very team focused. Um, I would argue more than any other sport in, um, that I know of. Number two is hard work ethic because it takes a lot of energy to play volleyball. Um, you're gonna have to do a lot of running, you gotta do a lot of moving, you always gotta be prepared to receive the ball at any given moment while the play is happening. Um, so it's gonna take a lot of high energy, someone who's willing to put in that work. Uh, number three, um, this one's a little bit of a weirder one and it's not you know, definite. Um, just So one thing that's appreciated in volleyball obviously is height. Um, one of the reasons I got into volleyball is I'm a very tall person. Um, we love seeing tall players come out. If you're not tall, that doesn't mean you can't come out. There's plenty of positions for you, especially a lot of kids will have really good verticals. So even if they're not necessarily tall, they can still get good hits in. Um, but regardless of you know height or no height, um, definitely come out, see what the team looks like. Today's spotlight highlights Mr. Reyes. Who even signed this guy up for this? Hey Pathfinders, my name is Mr. Reyes and I teach social studies here at Fremont High. Some of the pros of teaching media is that students get first-hand experience of working in, in, in a reporting environment. So they get to work as a team, they get to collaborate, they get to plan things out, they get to write scripts, uh, they get to conduct actual interviews, set up interviews, which is the difficult part, and then edit their videos uh, for our YouTube channel. The cons of teaching uh, media, if there are any, uh, it's probably more of the logistics um, scheduling interviews that tends to be uh, sometimes chaotic and problematic as everybody's busy so we have to kind of work around people's schedule in order to meet our deadlines for our interviews. <laughs> I've seen a lot of changes since the first Fremontian. Um, our technology has improved, our gear is a lot better, more professional-like, uh, thanks to the assistance of uh, Mr. Ferguson. Um, and um, we have seen uh, a tremendous growth in our editing style, in our questionings, in our interviews. Um, it, it's just looking better and better for every show. The best part about teaching media is seeing students, um, seeing their levels increase in every video. I am always uh, surprised and amazed how our videos are coming out. Um, the level is increasing dramatically and it's all because you guys are you know, following the instructions, paying attention uh, to Mr. Reyes and to Mr. Ferguson, and it is showing that we are taking it to the next level for every season and every show. How did I begin teaching media? I began, I began teaching media um, a couple years ago, uh, and it, was, it started out as a club on campus, and then when they turned it into, uh, into an actual class, um, they approached me if I was interested in teaching it. Uh, and I said, of course, you know, this, this could be a fun opportunity. And the students and I, we were learning as we went along. And whatever I learned, I applied to the next class and so on and so forth. And then fortunately, we have the assistance of Mr. Ferguson uh, with the LA Legacy Project. And they just took us to another level. And just as you guys are learning, I am also learning uh, from Mr. Ferguson as well. And we're gonna apply these rules and these new steps to our next semester and our next new class and so on and so forth. Um, I would like to say, uh, what I would like to say to my students is, uh, thank you for trying hard. I can see it in your videos. I can see it in your scripts and in your logs that you are increasing dramatically. And the reason why our Fremontian show is so popular and successful is because of you guys. All right, see you later guys, bye. This has been the Fremontian. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to click the bell down below for notifications on every time we post a new video. And remember, here at the Mott, we find a path or make one. Stay tuned for Fremontian number eight, and don't forget about daylight savings. Happy Friday, everyone, and we're out.